It's time for your Barbados Today Evening News Update for Friday, March 4. A High Court judge has reserved her judgment on preliminary issues in a lawsuit challenging the makeup of the Parliament of Barbados. Lawyers on both sides concluded their submissions before Madam Justice Cicely Chase QC today when the case continued in case management during a virtual sitting of the court. Former Attorney General Adriel Brathway is asking that the President's decision to reconvene Parliament be quashed on the basis that all but three of the 21 Senators have been appointed since Parliament resumed in February. However, the country's legislative business in the Senate has come to a halt in light of the lawsuit. A St. Michael man is now homeless after fire destroyed his home at Rock Hall around 3 p.m. this afternoon. Another house with two occupants was damaged during the blaze. Eight fire officers under the command of Station Officer Tremaine Perch responded to the incident. Homeowner Arthur Samuel told the media that he lost all his possessions during the blaze. Well, tell the truth, I don't know. I was home and I decided to left home and got the ATM for some money. And while on my way going down, a convent came and told me that my house was on fire. And when I came back, the neighbor told me that they just see the sparkles and the house burned to flat. I lost everything. Mm -hmm. The only thing I have is this shirt and this pants. How long you was living here, sir? From 1986. Yeah. So everything you completely lost, everything? Is the property, everything was the property insured? Well, the property was given to me by my mother because she was working at Spencer. So yeah. It's a shared, shared property, right? President of the Barbados Road Safety Association, Chairman Roland Boyne, has welcomed news from the Barbados Police Service that they will be utilizing the breathalyzer testing from April 1. Roland Boyne has been calling for the implementation of these machines since the law to legislate their use was passed in 2017. She told Barbados Today that she was extremely pleased that it will now become a reality. The Barbados Association, we are elated at the progress so far, um, if the um, breathalyzer, you know, coming into full stream um, in just a few weeks, it was a long, it was a long and hard, hard journey, you know, to get to this position. And you feel that it, it is so good. It words cannot explain, you know. And the thing about it is that it is now here that will help. Stop injury on our world, stop uh, collisions on our roads, and also stop death, unnecessary death in some instances on our world. And, you know, we are happy. In other news this Friday, in the next few weeks, there will be a full proposal to outline the end of the common entrance examination. That's the assurance of Director of Education Reform in the Ministry of Education, Technological and Vocational Training, Dr. Ida May Denny, as she spoke during the estimates debate in the House of Assembly today. Subject to the approval of Cabinet, we are proposing that having had the common entrance for the last time this year, that is in 2022, that means that our last set of students who will transition to the secondary school by virtue of that exam will happen in September 2022. We are proposing that the first set of students who transition under the new structure will transition in September 2023. So school year 2023-24 is identified as the first year that the new structure comes into being. It means that the students who are currently in class three at the primary level will be the first students to transition under the new structure. The Chinese government is set to invest $75 million into two educational projects geared at strengthening the island's food security and agricultural research. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Education, Technological and Vocational Training, Betty Aileen Helley, made the announcement while speaking in the lower house of parliament today. The Ministry of Education is embarking on a number of projects which are embedded in two projects that are being funded by the Chinese government. The two projects are the Hope Agricultural Training Project, which is at Hope Road, St. Lucie, 
and the Duke which is under the UWI Center for Food Security and Entrepreneurship. And both of these would have been set conceptualized by the Ministry of Education back in 2008. Now, both of the projects were selected for funding at approximately 74 million Barbados dollars. And a feasibility study would have been completed in 2018 for the implementation agreements to be signed by the Ministry of Education and the People's Republic of China. Now to the latest COVID-19 update, there were 158 new COVID-19 cases, 67 males and 91 females, recorded from the 921 tests conducted on Thursday by the Besto Santos Public Health Laboratory. Of those positive cases, 33 were under the age of 18 and 125 were 18 years and older. People in isolation facilities numbered 60, while 1,618 were in home isolation. As of March 3rd, a total of 316 people had succumbed to the viral illness. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I am Onika. I am a mother, I am a daughter, and I am a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental, so at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe and Keeping this in mind, make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To regional happenings now. In St. Lucia, allegations of sexual misconduct between a male teacher and a female student at a local learning institution have made their way to the Office of the Ministry of Education. On Thursday, Chief Education Officer Dr. Fiona Philip Meyer sent a strong message condemning acts of sexual misconduct in the island's education sector. We get more of this report from DBS Television. There have been allegations of sexual misconduct being meted out against a male teacher at a local learning institution in the north of the island. The case has landed on the desk of the Ministry of Education's Chief Education Officer, Dr. Fiona Philip Meyer, who has sent a stern warning denouncing acts of sexual misconduct in the island's education system. We are confronted with a situation that is rather of a sensitive nature because it involves one of our schools. We are keenly aware that all procedures have been followed in terms of dealing with the matter as a matter of urgency. There is on our part zero tolerance for any unacceptable behavior within any one of our institutions. And so we continue to work with the necessary authorities as well as our counseling teams to ensure that everything possible is done to bring the matter and resolve it in a manner that is acceptable as well as fair. On the international front, Russian forces in Ukraine sparked worldwide alarm as it sees Europe's biggest nuclear power plant. Moscow blocked Facebook and some foreign media websites as it passed a fake news law amid mounting censorship from global companies. We get more in this report from Reuters TV. Russian forces in Ukraine seized Europe's biggest nuclear power plant on Friday in an assault that triggered alarm around the world. While fighting raged across Ukraine as troops besieged cities in the second week of an invasion launched by Russian President Vladimir Putin. Officials later said the power plant was in working order. The capital, Kiev, in the path of a Russian armored convoy that has been stalled on a road for days, came under renewed attack with explosions audible from the city center. Look at the fallen trees. They fell and the wave broke all the windows in the village council house. The glass shards injured some people, but luckily all who were inside are alive. Sadly, there were casualties among those who were in the cars. 
Putin's actions have drawn almost universal condemnation, and Western countries have imposed heavy sanctions in an effort to squeeze the Russian economy. Well, that's news, but for the very latest, you can visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Capital Media HD, 99.3 FM.